The message was loud and clear. The American public will likely not find out why the Republican frontrunner refused to return state secrets he had stored away in his mansion and what exactly he intended to do with them before they head to the polls this November. If Trump wins, he could shut down the case entirely, and we, we may never find out. But that does concern, but what that does concern does not appear to be a priority for Judge Cannon. Instead, she seems intent on wasting time by scheduling bizarre hearings like the one that took place today in the courthouse in Fort Pierce, Florida, where Trump's defense team argued a point they first raised four months ago, but somehow Jack Smith was unconstitutionally appointed a special counsel, a desperate legal argument that has been routinely dismissed by other judges in similar circumstances. But Judge Cannon thinks that argument, well, it is worth a full day in court. At today's hearing, she grilled government prosecutors about how closely Attorney General Merrick Garland oversees their work. The prosecutor replied he was not authorized to discuss the level of communication before adding, I don't want to make it seem like I'm hiding something. Also, when Trump lawyer Emile Bovee claimed that the existence of a special counsel amounted to a shadow government, Cannon replied, that sounds very ominous, but what does that mean? Trump's lawyer, of course, did not answer Cannon's question. He just repeated his argument that Jack Smith was somehow inappropriately appointed. But his failure to answer does not matter in the end. Judge Cannon's decision to entertain such novel arguments and to eat up more time on the clock was in itself another in a series of wins for Trump and his defense. The question now, will that winning streak continue? Joining me now, Matthew Seligman, a lawyer and legal scholar who presented oral arguments in front of Judge Cannon today. Thank you so much for being with us on what I know was a busy day for you. You argued in front of Judge Cannon today that counter to Trump's lawyer's argument, Jack Smith's appointment was indeed constitutional. The main points you were trying to get across. Well, first, thanks for having me. Uh, so the main points to get across here are that there are decades of precedent that established that the special counsel is constitutional and that Jack Smith was lawfully appointed. Every court who have ever addressed this issue in similar circumstances, in identical circumstances, has held that. So for Judge Cannon to entertain this issue, well, if she rules ultimately that uh, Jack Smith was uh, unconstitutionally appointed, that would be an extraordinary breach with precedent. And I'm confident that ultimately both the 11th Circuit and the Supreme Court would swiftly reverse her. Matthew, I want you to help me understand something, which is a lot of people were surprised that Cannon even allowed outside parties to the case, such as yourself, to argue in court today. Were you surprised? Yes, I was. Um, so we never intended uh, to try to participate in this. It's extraordinarily uncommon for uh, amici like the uh, the clients that I represent to participate in an oral argument, even at the Supreme Court. So when we filed the motion to participate, we said we only wanted to do so because she had asked the other side to participate. And when we filed that motion, we noted that even at the Supreme Court, only 0.2% of cases have outside counsel, amici, that don't represent the government of the United States participate. So it's extraordinarily uncommon. And I think that's an indication that Judge Cannon was seriously entertaining this issue that had been so uh, so quickly rejected by every other court. Well, you, you layer on to the sort of unusual nature of having outside counsel, the fact that there were also a lot of legal experts who thought that today's hearing just shouldn't have occurred at all, uh, that matters like this are often dismissed without the need for a hearing. What say you? Well, the fact that she had a hearing at all, um, you know, is neither here nor there for me. The most important takeaway from today, I think, that might not come through uh, from reading the headlines is that Judge Cannon seemed to reject President Trump's mm -hmm. argument. Yep seemed very skeptical of his position. Um, now, there are some caveats to that, which we can go into, but ultimately, I think the most important takeaway from her questions today is that she has everything that she needs. She has all the materials in hand to swiftly reject President Trump's uh, argument that Jack Smith was unconstitutionally appointed. And so this can move forward quickly and she has all the materials she needs in order to do so. I agree that the skepticism was pretty clear in the reporting. Tell me, though, about those caveats you referenced. The most significant caveat, I think, was uh, a line of questioning that you referenced in the intro that happened at the very, very end. So she probed uh, the special counsel's attorney about the actual level of involvement that Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland has in overseeing the case. Now, that's legally irrelevant. The only thing that matters is whether Merrick Garland has legal authority to control the case and to dismiss special counsel Smith if he wants to. And that's 
undoubtedly true. Um, but Merrick Garland, as other attorney generals have before, has made a policy decision not to uh, interfere in the day-to-day -day, uh, conduct of the investigation and prosecution, just as he has with respect to the prosecution of Hunter Biden. Now, it's not relevant whether Merrick Garland has actually interfered with or had contact with, et cetera, the day-to-day -day operations of the special counsel's office. But Judge Cannon asked repeatedly about that. And that indicates to me that she might want to probe that further. And that worries me for two reasons. First, it is legally irrelevant. And so it's not a road that should be gone down at all. And second, it could eat up a lot of time and cause a lot more delay. So I'm hopeful that Judge Cannon ultimately recognizes that under the law, these sorts of factual probings into the internal workings of the Department of Justice are both inappropriate, unwarranted, and irrelevant. Matthew Seligman, on what has indeed been a very busy day for you, lawyer and legal scholar, thank you so much for joining us tonight.